Let's get to it. So yeah, welcome to our, our SQL webinar with our partners AMEX. So my name is Reese Lewis. I'm director at a company called uh, Vizira that offer a product called Revista, which is an integrated collaboration platform. So let's uh, let's just maximize this slide for a second and we'll uh, we'll get in today's into today's presentation. So I'm guessing that some of you have seen Revista in our previous uh, webinar, but I, I won't assume that you have, and we'll, uh, we'll run through this again in a bit more detail. So throughout the course of the session, please do ask questions. I'll try and answer those as as we go. And if, um, if you put those into the chat log, I'll do my best to answer them for you. So Revista, we're an integrated collaboration platform in a few words. So we we support many different file formats, and we have many interesting projects and clients uh, scattered right around the world. So this is just a list of some of the companies that I've been working with in the last few months. Globally, there's over 160,000 of our users and increases day by day, it seems, at the moment. So what we see is our customers vary in terms of where they're involved in designing, building, or operating any type of, of asset. So we've got designers in here, as you can see, probably some names that you're, you're familiar with, Hawkins Brown, you know, uh, 100 um, or so architect in central London, um, AECOM there, they're a global client of ours using Revisto in various parts of the world for um, infrastructure projects, stadiums, uh, they're, they're a multidisciplinary practice, so they're doing all sorts of work. And then we have you know, contractor clients like Skanska and ISG that again are building all sorts of interesting facilities for a lot of our clients here at, at the top. So we've got owner operators here where I see most of or the value that we can bring is by giving access to, um, to the companies here at the top that receive this data at the end of the project. So talking a little bit about why Revisto is we still see today various companies on uh, different stages of their digital transformation journey. Um, and every project team we speak to, there are multiple communication threads which are difficult to track and manage. So depending on where you fit in and what tools you're using, you may be reviewing 2D information um, or 3D information. It could, could vary. But what we hear a lot is people are still literally printing out paper documents, redlining those and sending an email perhaps if they're in the office and uh, are designing if they're a contractor they'll do a similar thing but take a picture and create a report after their site visit um there's, there's 2d markup tools available as well which are great but they're not linked to the the, the models that we have the, the ifcs the revit tecla civil files so then that, that introduces another tool that we need to look at this 3d data um, which you typically need to be a competent user of these tools to do so Technical review, clutch detection, Salibri, Navisworks are tools that, that do that type of thing. But then there's a variety of ways and formats that that information can be shared, PDF, XML, and so on and so forth. So before you know it, you get this convoluted process with communication being shared across multiple platforms, different people that just really becomes a very unorganized place to understand what's going on. So. Yeah, the people on the project are constantly jumping from one tool or process to another. And we call this context switching. And uh, this was a review done by Harvard that talks about how inefficient this process is. And it's common across all industries. Um, so, you know, you can see the, what's it saying here? The average desk employee loses two hours a day due to context switching. So if we can help you gain half of that back using Revisto as your integrated collaboration platform, then hopefully we're doing a good job. So the idea is, Revisto can be your central hub for a wide range of tasks throughout the whole project life cycle. Accessibility is a massive thing as well. So we can start to give your very complex projects to somebody on a, on a tablet, for example. And interoperability is a massive thing for us as well. We support lots of different file formats. Uh, the name sometimes confuses people thinking that we uh, are a, a, a Revit plugin, which is incorrect. We support Revit, but we also support all of the other tools here that we have direct plugins for and industry standard um, formats, IFC, OBJ, FBX, Reality Capture, and link with a number of uh, document management or project management or 
common data environment systems, whatever you refer to uh, those as in your part of the world. So I wanted to run through that introduction quickly because I wanted to set the scene again. Uh, let me just see if Peter has come in. Looks like he's not. So Tell him I'll continue. And I think I'll do, 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 just grab my iPad, here, which is what I've got, because I want to use that in today's session as well. So I know, Jake, you had a couple of questions, and we'll get to, to those at the end of today's presentation. OK, so here's a revisitor application. Yes, Jake, uh, we're recording this as well. So this can be shared afterwards. And I can see Peter's joined as well. Hi, Peter. Um, I can see your mouth moving, but can't hear you. So you may just want to check. Can you hear me now? Yep, loud and clear. So we've just run the introduction to Peter getting into yeah. the application. So you, so Peter is, uh, maybe you can introduce yourself as well, Peter, so people know who you are. Yes. Yeah, so um, my name's Peter Cordier. Um, I'm a technical uh, a, a resource, essentially, a, a custom service um, or custom success implementation manager for all of our clients. So yeah. I help um, everybody uh, that, that has a Revista license with uh, implementation, training, um, and I've spent quite a lot of time with Jake. Um, so Jake will be able to um, explain explain the things I do but yeah any anything technical um, in terms of support I, I can help you with that perfect thanks Peter so Peter works very closely with some of the names I just mentioned um, so let's get to it so I'll take a look at our project too is which is Revistaville Road it's um, a place Peter and I live um, a lot these days so this is the Revisto application so I just want to explain a couple of things here um, and I talk about interoperability. So you can see here there are what seems a variety of buildings, and each one of these is coming from a different data set. So let's just show you uh, the folder hierarchy so you can see here exactly what we have. So in total, there are just over 40 various projects that are in here. Uh, the important thing to mention is the file type. So I can see here are a number of Revit files, structural, mechanical, that relate to one of the buildings. We have uh, a recap file in here, uh, OBJ, DGN, IFC, and this is Vectorworks, I think, Peter, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah. Um, so, in this one Revisto project, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different, um, and the landscape, I suppose, we have uh, the terrain rather. Eight different file formats uh, combined here in, in one place. So everything I'm doing now, I could also do on my tablet. So let's just take a look around first of all. So I think it's important to, to mention how you navigate through Revisto. So depending on your technical skill set, um, somebody like Peter will be more comfortable using controls from Revit or Navis or Civil 3D. Um, I'm going to use the Revisto controls, which literally are four buttons on my keypad. So if you're a, uh, familiar with the gaming controls, the W, A, S, and D key, or the arrow keys, on my right click, I can start to navigate around this very large file quickly and easily. And that's what we were talking about in terms of accessibility. Anyone can start using Revisto, um, and with Peter's help, they can get up to speed very quickly. So let's just take a look around at the different file formats we have here. So this, Peter, you know this project better than I, this is a point cloud, I believe, where the particular client was scanning the project as things were getting built to, to verify the, the as-built information against the model. And if I come back home here, I know we've got this building on the right-hand side is an IFC. Now, if I just teleport there by holding down Alt and click, and I can hover over any object, which will show me all of the metadata associated with these objects. So I can see in here, this has come uh, source file IFC. And all of this data here associated with the object, Pete will show you far better than I can what we can do with that shortly. But let's just uh, deselect and show you some of the tools across the top. So I can start to cut sections. So I want to do this to show you what we have inside. So within this uh, building 
container envelope, which is an IFC. All of this mechanical pipe work here is from um, MicroStation. So this is DGN. So again, if I double click on one of those, turn off the sectioning tool, do that again, we'll see source file DGN. So a very powerful tool to look at various sources information in one place. So that's just 3D um, and various formats of it. We also have our 2D documentation here. Now, a lot of our clients are more comfortable in this 2D world, which is fine. So what we've got here is we've effectively mirrored the project documents that have come through here into Revisto. So these have either come from something like BIM 360 Docs or as part of the export, export from your BIM authoring tool, or they may just be uh, PDFs. So you know, I've brought in some PDFs here, which are training documents on how to use Revisto. We also have some of the architectural drawings related to, to one of the, the models. So we can pan and zoom, take measurements, create issues, which we'll do in a second. Um, but I just wanted to explain this firstly. So this green icon, if I click on that, I just want to show you something that's really impressive. So we can now start to coordinate between 2D and 3D. This is such a powerful tool in its own right. So this helps us to engage you know, non-technical users like myself that may not understand what that drawing means. Um, but it also allows people like Peter, Jake, and um, your consultants to understand how information from different consultants using different tools potentially is going to work or maybe not going to work. So we can coordinate between 2D and 3D. And again, this may be a, a PDF and a point cloud, a drawing from Tekla on a, a Revit model. So huge benefit to do that. Now let's talk about the, the issue tracker. I like to refer to this as our, our digital audit trail, your single source of truth, the golden thread of communication on all of your projects, or should be, as opposed to what we talked about earlier on, this, uh, where is it, defragmented approach to communication living in different places managed by different people. That's just, uh, it's, a, it's a red alert there for uh, additional costs and, and things to be missed. And this is where Revisto can really help. So depending on what you know, these issues are of effectively tasks or activities, I like to refer to them as, that we're starting to uh, assign and distribute around the project team. So you can see there's a huge variety of them and we'll start to create them now as we go through. So if I just jump into 3D here and we'll show you how we create an issue. So we've come into this room. Actually, let's jump to one of the rooms I know is in this particular building. Uh, let's go to the plant room. So if I click on that, all of the room data has come through as well. You can see that will take me directly to the center of that room. So let's just navigate through where we've got more space to play here. And now I can start to review and, and ask questions effectively. So I don't know, let's let's cut a section. Um, we're playing against this particular column and for whatever reason we want to take a measurement between um, this, these pieces of equipment here so I can grab the measuring tool and we've got a laser measure there um, but I want to get a bit more specific and know the minimum distance between these two particular objects which is uh, that that's for maintenance reasons let's say um, that's not enough space so what I'm going to do is just create a new issue so I'll show you it this way first of all and then how we automate the process with our stamps. The good news now is, you know, if you are taking snippets, sending emails, redlining, you're still going to do that in Revisto, so the mindset doesn't change completely. The benefit is Revisto is just going to help save you a considerable amount of time doing that. More importantly, it tracks the information. So there's a personal benefit and a project benefit here. Lots of markup tools, so, you know, I'll just come in here and be as creative as I feel today. Um, We'll say this needs to be um, 1300 mil and, you know, and we'll give it a, a name at the top. We'll call that installation, installation issue for now and then click done. So we've logged our first issue. That's been logged here in our issue tracker alongside all of the other tasks and activities we talked about um, earlier on. So we can see we've selected two objects. 
and it's showing me where they both are in this particular model view. Now I want to send that email, shall we say, but I'm going to do that digitally here through Revisto. So I can assign this to anybody in the project. So both Peter and I are in the UK, but um, you know, probably a five hour drive apart, um, three hour drive if you're Peter. Um, so we'll just log that to Peter there. He'll now get notified in real time that that issue has been assigned to him and he'll receive an email as well. Now I want to put some additional information in here, like a deadline, so we can do that. I want to tell Peter how important that issue is, so we'll say it's critical because we're, we're building as we speak. Um, we don't want to make this issue uh, available to everyone on the project because it's sensitive and we can tag the issue as well. So all of these tags here are great because we can start to search against the, the 4,000 issues here just using our tags. That's it, an additional meta um, data field that we can add. So Peter's come online and you can see here now we now have, and why we call this the golden thread, uh, is all of the activity is logged. So whenever somebody added, changed, updated anything, we can see the activity here. And it's been assigned to Peter. He's changed the status to in progress. He can't close issues out, only mark them as solved. It's my job to, to verify things have been dealt with. And we'll speak on, on that in a bit more detail shortly. I can do that, so I'll update the native model. Great. Thanks, Peter, and uh, we're off. So in the issue tracker, we can attach supporting documentation, photographs, 360 images, documentation. Uh, and Peter can add uh, an example in there for us in, in a little bit. So I just want to explain the full concept of how this works before we start to speed this process up. Um, so here is the snippet that Peter's received. If I click on 3D, that will now show Peter exactly where this is in the 3D federated model. You remember the 2D and the 3D overlay I showed you, so our issue tracker um, embeds that information as well. So this pin here lives on the project XYZ coordinate. So this 3D markup that I just created here, this issue, now knows what drawings are affected by that. So for Peter, that's more comfortable working in 2D, he can now see what drawings are affected by this um, issue I've created in the model. The biggest win for Peter, in, in my view, is historically, Peter, how long would it take somebody to go and find that in a, you know, a dense Revit MEP model if they'd received an email with a snippet? Well, it depends on the size of the project, but it can take, um, you know, take five minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour or, or longer, depending on, on what's in there. Exactly. And it will also sometimes, you know, so not only time um, it takes, if, the, if it is a dense project, then sometimes the wrong thing can get changed. So what we're going to do here is, is make that a much easier process. So I'm going to point this particular project uh, to Naviswix. So we need to link it, which we've done, and just click on the issue tracker. So all of the, the model data you've seen in Revisto has been exported from the various tools into Revisto. I skipped that set. so. Um, part rather so we push that through now the issue tracker is synchronized for peter that 5 10 15 30 minute process double clicks here bam, is now a three second exercise so if you've got a, you know, an office of five people you do the maths how much time and effort that's going to save your practice if there's 500 people on the project then you really need to be using this today so you know that's just to a detailed overview of how the, the issue tracker works, what we're doing, and how it's linked back to the authoring system as well. Uh, whilst all of these issues are being created, Peter's role is to provide an overview of project status or performance to the, the PM. So here we can see all of our, we've got a dashboard that have been, that's been set up, so we can pull out that information in a variety of ways. Um, here's a dashboard, Peter, kindly created for me that I can look at through any browser on my phone, my tablet, wherever I feel I need to. And instantly I've got a view of the status of that project. So how many issues are there and the status of them? Who are they assigned to? Show me the clashes per discipline and how they're coming along. Um, and in a bit more detail, clash um, for the structural discipline, who's creating issues on drawings, issues against company. So all of this information is embedded here and has been pulled out in real time for me automatically. So with that in mind, I just want to create another two issues and then I'll hand over to Peter to get into the detail. So if we come back to 3D here, 
And what I'll do, because this project is quite large, I can actually, and my machine is handling it very well, um, I've just got a you know, standard BIM workstation. I may just want to unload some of the other information here, which I've done, and that's actually unloaded that entire um, data set from my um, machine, so the RAM isn't required. So let's come in and create that issue again, but now I'm going to use a, a stamp. So a stamp is an issue, an activity, but it's predefined with all of the fields that I, I felt in earlier on. So what we're going to do is, let's cut a section box this time somewhere. Uh, let's that here. Oh, let's just do a section box around this particular area. So there's, uh, what have we got in here? Well, let's do something with the facade at the front. So for whatever reason, we, we don't like this and it needs to be changed. So we're now just going to pick and place a stamp. So you can see there's a variety of categories that have been set up. So we're using Revista for construction. So we have activity set up for each indiv uh, individual work package. Uh, same, we have one for each consultant on the project or discipline again, some for facility management, site operation, and all of this is customizable. So I'm just, we're in design now, and I don't like the, um, the style here of this particular piece of equipment. So I'm going to grab one of these, so we can go a structure or architecture, and we'll go a structure here. I'll position that stamp, and that now has created that task for me with all of the, the fields here pre-populated. So that one actually is a bad example, but I'll show you how we create one. So we'll call it uh, thing like design. Change, and we'll add it to this category. So what we're going to do is fill in these fields here. Um, we'll go with green. We can give it a priority. This type of issue is going to get assigned to, to Peter. We can add people in as a CC, so myself and Matthew on this project. Uh, this one is public, and we'll tag this as, let's go with structural. So that now lives here, it's been color coded. So this is now available for everybody in the project to use. So I'm gonna come back to 3D and do that again. And we can see that stamp has now been created, it's added there, so I literally pick and place, done. So now with two clicks, I've done what would traditionally take you know, 15 minutes by the time you print, send an email, document it, and so on and so forth. If I come back to the issue tracker just to explain here, there was the original issue that we, we created where I explained how this works and what's being um, completed here. It now is a single click exercise. So whenever I'm drew, uh, reviewing drawings or models, so here on this um, walkway layout, again, if I want to create an issue, we can grab that mechanical stamp, pick and place all of those um, fields have been created automatically. And maybe we want to put a structural one down here, click. And place done. So it's literally now a single click exercise to create, distribute, and manage these activities using our, our stamp tool, which is linked back to the authoring tool, as we've shown, Navisworks and, and Revit. I'll show you that actually with the drawing, and our reports are being produced as well. So I'll just show one more thing with this particular drawing sheet so you can see how that switchback works. Uh, let's come into, we have some really powerful 2D review tools as well. So I'll just um, go in here and start measuring up. So we click on our measure tool and we can start to, this will just snap the surfaces. I will take a measurement there. Maybe we want to understand the area of this particular office. And let's make that blue, that will do. And we can start to, Measure up skewer areas as well if you want, that will do. I will make that green and polyline. So these are all relatively new. And again, a lot of our clients are using Revisto just for 2D review. So, you know, that's uh, just a, a bad example, but uh, it'll do for now. So I now want to create an issue. We already have stamp set up, right? So we'll use the, uh, the AMEC one here, position it down and click done. So that's been logged. Even though we've positioned that stamp on a drawing sheet, again, that works in reverse. So that will show me directly where that is in the 3D federated uh, space as well. And what other drawings are affected 
by that uh, issue pin that I've created. And if I come back here to Revit and click on the issue tracker, it's now going to synchronize with, with Revit so that when I double click on this particular issue related to this drawing, if that drawing sheet, which it is in this particular file, is in linked to this Revit file, then it'll take me directly back to that drawing sheet. So I've sort of taken my time here to explain what it is I'm doing and how all of this works. Peter will definitely be able to go through that much quicker, but hopefully that explains the, the mechanics and the benefits of how our issue tracker works. Um, everything else, anything else, sorry, on that, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I can do all of that on my tablet as well, so maybe we can show that in, in a short while, Peter. So if I missed anything blatantly obvious, Peter, that you need to add on to that before no. I hand over yourself? No, I don't think so, and I think the other things that I'm going to run through um, will will answer um, and go into a bit more detail with with some of the some of the other functionality. So, um, no, that, that that's that's great, Reese. Thank you. Um, I think you need to share my screen uh, as the as you're the presenter. I don't think I can do it myself. I think you have to share mine. Let's have a look. Uh, so I've stopped sharing my screen. Yeah. So there should be an option in there for you to share yours, unless I need to do something creative my side. Arthur, are you still on here? Request. Do, 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 staff, uh, Peter, right click and make a presenter. Are you sure yeah. you want to make Peter Cordier a presenter? Of course I do. Uh, okay. So hopefully now, Peter, you should be able to share your. Okay, so show my screen. Oops, I'm going to get the right one. Yeah, so we've got your your emails up there from, from Jake with a list of questions. Okay, um, I need to share, if we can see your screen, stop. We've just switched from Zoom to, to go to meeting for webinars, so uh, yeah, this is yeah, on a screen. Hey, hey, live yeah. presentation, so okay. okay. You... Peter, so, uh, we're, we can see Revista now, that's great. Okay, so cool. Do you want yeah, me to run through things. the questions, Peter, or are you going to, and you answer them, or do you want um, to? I, I... I can do that. Um, I've got them up on another screen, so okay, um, perfect. Should, should be okay. Right. Perfect. Just, All right. So Over to you, Peter. Second. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, I need to move that. Sorry. Uh, drag this over here. Okay. Right. So Jake, Jake um, gave me a, a list of things which um, I think is going to be relevant to 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 some of the the workflows that you guys use. Um, I'm just going to run through the questions to, to keep it sort of methodical and make sure I don't miss anything. So the first question is um, is around uh, how using different software such as Civil 3D and InfraWorks, and how uh, what's the recommended method of bringing that information into a Visto. Um, so InfraWorks, um, we don't actually have a, a direct plugin with. Um, so that that would be a, a case of uh, importing or exporting uh, an OBJ, uh, for example, or an FDX um, mesh, and then and then bringing that into Revisto itself. So I can quickly show you what that looks like. Um, so I need to just find a test that I did. So this is this is um, a, a quite a large area of of Peru, um, and this was quite quite simply a, a, an area um, that I basically I created this model in in InfraWorks and, and exported that uh, via an FDX and then imported that into Visto. So that's the method of bringing um, information in from from InfraWorks. So if I just have a look here at the things in scheduler, um, this is, like I said, an FBX. And to bring it in, it's very straightforward. You just click on uh, project import, and you can import all these different file types um, directly into Avisto. So we do have uh, a lot of um, plugins with, with, with most of the major softwares out there, but anything that we don't have a direct plugin with, you can bring in this way. Um, now, if I if I open, I'm going to be flipping in and out of different projects here just to 
run through um, the questions. So the other one was uh, how to bring information in from Civil 3D. Um, so this is Civil 3D. Um, we have a, a, a plugin. So we've got the, what, both of Vista 4 and Vista 5 are, are separate plugins. Um, but I suggest if you do download Revisto, you always go for the latest software um, and, and definitely uh, get Revisto 5 installed. So to export to Revisto um, from Civil 3D, you just use our export to Revisto tools. Um, that then gives you the option to export either the model um, or the drawings or both. Um, and, and, and that's it, really. That it's as, it's as straightforward as that. You do have an export scheduler, so you can choose to um, set this up, and that will periodically export the uh, the model and all the drawings um, based on the selection that you use when when you set that up in in the first place. Um, there is a, a, a sort of tip um, when, when you're bringing information in from Civil 3D directly from Civil 3D, you what what you're bringing in um, when you use the the, the direct civil 3D um, export is is the whole model. So uh, civil 3D, um, unlike you know some softwares, you you have a lot of I call it detritus. You know your work workings um, around around the, the 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 sort of model. So my advice would be to to clean all that up. Um, you can control um, and hide certain things with Revisto 5 quite, quite easily. Um, but the, 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 I, would, I would, like I said, I'd recommend um, taking out the XREFs um, during the export that you don't need um, in, inside Revisto because essentially the whole model is, is being pushed, pushed through. Um, this is a Revisto project with some civil 3D information in, in it. So um, if I, open my object tree here. Um, these four files are actually civil 3D files. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's essentially the, the process. I I won't have time to go into any more detail on that. If if anybody does need um any any additional sort of explanation, I'm, I'll be happy to to run through that after this webinar. Um, okay, so question two was um it's possible now to move models around in, in version five. Um, please demonstrate this with an uncoordinated IFC. So that's fine, I can do that. Um, let's close this one and I'm not gonna bother thinking. I'll open another project. So if I if I take this, well, actually I don't need to do that. Um, I'm just thinking, yeah, no, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. It'll be fairly, fairly easy uh, to, to demonstrate. So I'm actually going to, just going to take this, um, take one of these models out, this IFC, so I can show you from the whole process. So I'll just take that one out there. Okay. Right, so I'm going to bring an IFC in. It's going to be in the wrong place. Um, and I'll show you how easy it is to move it. So. I'm going to import an IFC. So this this is this is an IFC of a, a mechanical model, um, which I purposely moved so it's in the wrong place. And like I said, I will show you how to to move that in a second. So that shouldn't take too long. Um, while that's that process is is happening, um, I'll just just look at a couple of, of the other other uh, sort of questions. Um, there was a, a, a similar question in terms of repositioning a point cloud. Um, when I show you the process of moving the IFC, or the point cloud uh, is exactly the same uh, principle. So let's load these. So I can see here now, and um, this is the IFC that I've just brought in. Let's have a look at this. So we can clearly see that's that's in the wrong place. And if I just isolate that in transparency, you can see there it's um it's, it's poking out the building. So to move it, um, you need to know 
where you're moving it to uh, and, and that's quite critical really um i know that this needs to be moved um not not on the z um i think it was on the x so that's wrong it needs to be minus <laughs> sorry i did this early on very quickly so let's move that minus and then move that to, to the left so that's now in the right place um, and like, like I said, you can, you can, you can move it anywhere around the X, Y or Z axis. You can also rotate it. Um, the only, the only caveat, like I said, is, is if you bring it in and it's, it's completely um, in, in the wrong place, you need to figure out how much you need to move it by with, with, with each of the, uh, the, the coordinates there, but that, that's in, in principle, how, how you, how you move things around. Okay. Uh, question three: Are there any tips or recommended workflows when working with the following file types? For example, a Revit tip might be creating sheets with view ranges exactly the height of each level to catch the stamps on that level when exporting to PDF. Yeah. So, with um, as uh, Jake sort of uh, explained in his question there, um, there are there are good practices. Um, for exporting information. So just to run through the explanation there, um, when you're exporting sheets from Revit, um, let's open this sheet up. The sheet itself has a particular view range. So where's that view range gone? Oh, that's gone onto another screen. So you have you have the the, the associated levels and and the offsets here. So with Revisto, when you if I just cancel that a second, when you um, place a sheet, say in three D. So if I just come come down here and I place a a, a stamp rather. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna place a stamp here, and I know that's on the ground floor. If I now go into my issue tracker, um, the drawings that are affected by that issue, effectively the 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 two D drawings have a a three D um, element uh, around them. So so the the drawing in in the three D model is 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 got a box around it essentially. So to have the view ranges. Um, Set, set appropriately with the ground floor, for example, to have the view range, you know, up to this, up to the ceiling, um, and, and to the ground floor, not not going up to, you know, level three. For example, your your issues then will be hosted essentially on the correct sheet. I'm hoping that's making sense. Um, with there's there's some other sort of questions here about um, tips for other softwares. I'll, I'll quickly run through those. Um, Navisworks, the the I suppose I can't, I can't think of a, a specific tip for Navisworks other than um, the, of the explanation that you can export uh, 3D geometry from Navisworks, not, not drawings, um, and you can also sync clashes from Navisworks. So Navisworks actually has specific workflows, which again, probably won't have time to run through um, all of those details on, on this webinar, but um, I'm happy to, to provide you know, explanation after today. Um, point cloud and RCP, uh, or sorry, point cloud RCP files. Uh, I, I'd say the, 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 the tip would be to try and coordinate it um, before you bring it into a list though. Like I said, it is possible to move it around, but um, it's, it's sometimes easier to make sure that it is um, coordinated before you bring it in. Uh, Civil 3D and or InfoWorks, um, so, Civil 3D, I, I sort of explained that earlier on, and make sure that it, it, if possible, have the Civil 3D files cleaned up with, without the, the, the unnecessary XREFs um, in there. Um, Inventor, uh, I don't actually use Inventor, so I, I, I can't sort of give you any detail on that. I, I, I know most of the softwares we have plugins with, but not every single one. <laughs> um, if anyone wants any specific advice on Inventor, um, then, Again, we we can answer those questions. We do have a plugin with with Inventor, and um, 
So you can bring uh, information directly in from there into this display, just like I showed you with the uh, Civil 3D example. Um, question four, what's the best work method for presenting issues or stamps within Revit? Is, is it still creating a 3D view while Revit is open in another window? Is there another way perhaps in version five? So no, there isn't. And I think just to reiterate what, what, what that question sort of means, you can create issues. Um, sorry, can't do that. Um, you can create an issue uh, from Revit in, and send that to Revisto. Um, you can do that either from the sheet or from the 3D uh, model. Um, there's no special way uh, with version five that, that, um, that you know that doesn't work differently in version five. It's still the same same method. So if I go to my Revisto 5 uh, plugin here, I'm going to make sure that's connected to the issue uh, or the, the, the project. Um, so that's now connected to, to this one. Um, you can check, you can always double check the, 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 which project um, this Revisto, uh, sorry, this Revit session is connected to. Um, so this is, yeah, this is the, the one. And to create an, an issue, Again, just just select new issue. That's essentially taking a screenshot of that drawing, um, and I can I can use a stamp. Just call that uh, architecture drawing review, for example, and then click done. And that's now um, it's taking a screenshot essentially of that drawing and um, created an issue inside of Revisto. So yeah, but there's no um, that 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 method is is still the same. Just checking the time there. Um, we couldn't filter stamps per level or elevation. Has this been solved? So the 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 answer is you you can't um, filter by section box yet. For example, and that that is something which is in in our development development plan with with Revisto Five. You can. Um, Create a search set, create, create a section box around a particular uh, area, and you could do that for for building levels. Um, and and when the when when the filtering of the stamps work within the the, the section box themselves, and um, we you, you will be able to do that. But at the moment, the only way you can filter um, stamps is is using our our filtering tools um, in the issue tracker there. Uh, can 2D drawings within Revista be exported to BIM 360 whilst displaying stamps? So, yes, you can export uh, PDFs of drawings with stamps, but you can't yet yeah, you can't push that directly into BIM 360 from our BIM 360 integration. Um, so, I did export a sheet earlier on, um, so it's very very straightforward. So, go to 2D here. Pick any sheet, doesn't really matter which one you pick. Let's just pick it up on the ground floor again. Um, let's go to the issue tracker and we'll reset the filters there. So you can you can export to PDF, you can include the currently filtered issues, so everything that you can see there, or you can um, filter by a particular preset and the issues that, that then get printed on that drawing will, will match the, the, the issue tracker preset there. Um, if I show you what it looks like. So this is a, a PDF. Is that going to open on my other screen? Um, so this is a PDF with issues um, showing on the PDF. So if you wanted to get that back into BIM 360, um, the only way you could do that is, is by, like I said, printing this off and then uh, publishing that back to BIM 360 in, in the normal way. Let's just close that. Uh, okay, so um, there's, there's a general question around around BIM 360. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly explain how, how the integration works. So for those of you that don't know, um, we have integrations 
with with BIM 360, Box and Procore. Um, the BIM 360 integration, if I go to um, my docs here, I'm connected at the moment to a, a, a particular BIM 360 project. Um, we we use this the, the way that that, that we um, use use our BIM 360 um, sort of files isn't anywhere near what what a you know a design practice would use um, or how a design practice would use BIM 360. It, it, we just have it as a as a container essentially to demonstrate things like this. What I'm what I'm about to show you. So. The integration when you've connected uh, Revisto to BIM 360, there is a, a bit of the workflow and the background there which I can share um, in terms of the, the details of how you actually could go about that. Uh, but once you've once you've connected it up, you can access essentially your um, your information that's that's uh, hosted on BIM 360 for, directly from the the Revisto application. Um, and that's that is limited to drawings um, or or PDFs essentially um, and, and and other documentation. Uh, there's no direct uh, connection with models just yet. Um, so if I wanted to say open this um, drawing, uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm basically opening the the, the drawing in Revisto from Bin360. You can um, then send this drawing to the, the uh, Revisto 2D space, essentially. So you can, there's already a sheet uh, with that name that um, is, is, uh, has been uploaded to, to the Revisto uh, 2D space. So what, what it's prompting me at the moment is to replace my BIM 360 drawing with um, a, the drawing that's in uh, Revisto uh, 2D. So you can you can you know you can bring drawings in say from from Revit and then and then subsequently from BIM 360 um, if you wanted to do that. So yeah, that that's that's really the the, the sort of limitation I, I suppose of of the BIM 360 integration. Um, it's really a, a, a viewing uh, a, a, a way to, to view information on BIM 360 from Revisto. Um, yeah, so that that's that. Uh, I think I've answered um, all of Jake's questions, and um, hopefully that was clear to everybody. Uh, we've got we've got five minutes left, so um, if we do have any questions, then uh, please. I'll keep an eye on that. That's uh, that's right in the yeah. chat. Uh, can um, you, Jake? Can you... Yeah. Perfect. So. Uh... Thank you for that. So I can see some of the questions are coming through. So now is your opportunity to, to ask questions, everybody. So we'll be able to do that in the in the chat log. Um, if you just type away, we'll do our best to, to answer those as we go through in the next couple of minutes. So great overview, Peter. That's um, really useful. I've been trying to get my iPad to, to connect to my screen. So, uh, I mean, people can see me on, on video here. So everything Peter's shown, as I mentioned earlier on, we can also do on our tablet. Um, so if you're wanting to engage with you know, a, a non-technical user, then the, the project Peter just opened up is now just opening up on my tablet. We'll wait for that to, to come through. I can actually cache this as well, so I can work offline. So let me select that. We just want to take a look at the medical center for now. You'll see that that'll down download that's coming in and then this is caching for use in the field so this is really useful for a site verification snagging punch listing you know just a great way to engage anybody in your, te your, your team that doesn't have a micro station or a, a Revit license or an office works license so all of the, the functions are pretty much exactly the same but i'm now navigating through here as you can see using my two thumbs i think we had a, an appearance template set up here as well for, for MEP systems. So if I set that here, you can see that's now inherited that appearance profiler. So I can take a look at the MEP system in um, much clearer detail. So for me, um, lots of our clients say that is such a powerful way to, to engage pretty much anybody because they don't have to be a technical user, have a powerful workstation, or indeed any of the BIM authoring tools. It is necessary because they want to 
to review and ask questions. And you know, that tablet function there is a great way to do that. VR is also something that we support. So you can take your Navisworks files or your point clouds directly into, into VR as well, should you want to. So um, anyway, that was that was a final yeah. point I wanted to raise, Peter. Are you seeing any of the other? Yeah, there's, um, yeah there's, 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 sorry, one, one or two more questions. Um, if I can share my screen quickly. Yeah. Um, I can see them now. I can see your screen. Okay. You can see, okay, what can you see? Uh, your 2D plan there, the basement. Okay. Um, can you see that, the, the uh, half center? Yep. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was a question. Um, just just uh, wanted to show you how to access uh, further resources. Um, so that we have a very good help center on our website. Um, in here, you've got um, lots of really useful uh, sort of learning videos and there's in industry workflows and learning paths as well, for example. So if you're interested in um, architecture and design, um, there's some su the suggested topics for you to have a look at. Um, so yeah, this this is a really good resource to for, 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 for sort of self help and training. Um, we also have a, a, a YouTube channel where you can access that information. Um, we've also got if I just go directly to our um, website, there's there's lots of uh, useful um, and interesting information in terms of uh, previous webinars that we've run. So yeah, a, a, a really an endless um, supply, if you like, of, of, of information and, and resources for you guys to get into. Great. Um, Jake, Jake was asking about the, the, the switchback, essentially. Um, so if I, if I just come, come to here and go to an issue, um, Let's find a, a decent one. Okay, so there's there's a, there's a very s a straightforward way to, to to view information. I mean, we sort of demonstrated that earlier on. Um, I think that the, you've already shown the switchback um, function, haven't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the two D and, and the three D. So um, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. So it works in the same way. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bother running through that again. Yeah, it, it works. So you literally link your BIM offering tool to a visit, so double click on that box and, and that will work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, 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 perfect. Well, we're, we're almost at time and I'm conscious everyone is busy. So hopefully this gives you a bit more of a, a detailed overview of what Revisto is, uh, an integrated collaboration platform that can help project teams deliver projects on time and the budget and uh, you know, enjoy the process along the way as well by you know embracing the, the digital transformation piece I discussed earlier on and saving yourself a lot of time engaging more people and uh, in building better assets for our clients. So thank you for inviting us today and if you do have any questions then uh, please speak directly to, to the team at AMEC. They'll, they'll be able to assist with setting up trial access if you want to, pricing and so on and so forth. So from Peter and myself, take care and uh, we'll, we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks everybody. All, all right. right. Bye.